What if paradise wasn't just a figment of our imagination, but a real place on Earth? Picture a place of perfect harmony, a utopia where humans and nature coexisted in peace. This is the Garden of Eden, a paradise that has been etched into the annals of history, culture, and religion. The Garden of Eden has been depicted in countless works of art, literature, and scripture, serving as a symbol of humanity's origins and its harmonious relationship with the natural world. It's said to be the birthplace of the first humans, a divine garden where they lived in perfect harmony with nature. But here's the intrigue. What if Eden wasn't just a metaphor or a spiritual concept? What if it was a tangible, physical location somewhere on our planet? What if we could pinpoint it on a map? This is a question that has tantalized explorers, scholars, and scientists for centuries. So, has the Garden of Eden been hiding in plain sight? To solve this mystery, we need to journey back in time to the ancient world. A realm of myths and legends, where truth and fiction often intertwine, and where the story of the Garden of Eden first took root. In the ancient texts, Eden is depicted as a divine paradise, a sanctuary of harmony where the first humans, Adam and Eve, lived in blissful innocence. It's described as a lush and fruitful garden nourished by four rivers flowing from its heart. These rivers lend us our first clues. Two of them are named in these ancient accounts, the Tigris and the Euphrates. These are real rivers, still flowing today, winding their way through the Middle East. The other two rivers, the Pishon and Gihon, are shrouded in mystery. Scholars have speculated about their identities for centuries, with theories ranging from lost rivers now buried beneath the desert sands to symbolic streams representing trade routes or boundaries. Yet it's the mention of the Tigris and Euphrates that provides the most compelling clue. These rivers converge in a region that was once the heartland of ancient Mesopotamia. This area, which stretches across parts of what we now know as Iraq, Kuwait, and Syria, was home to some of the earliest civilizations in human history. The ancient Sumerians, who inhabited Mesopotamia over 4,000 years ago, left behind a wealth of knowledge in the form of cuneiform tablets. These texts speak of a time when the region was a verdant paradise, much like the Eden of biblical lore. So, could Mesopotamia be the location of the fabled Garden of Eden? It's a tantalizing thought. A place where history, mythology, and geography intertwine, pointing us towards a paradise lost in time. These clues guide us to a region known as Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization, a land of ancient cities, and perhaps, just perhaps, the original Garden of Paradise. Welcome to Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization. This vast region stretching from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea is where some of the earliest advancements in human history occurred. Imagine a place where the first cities were built, the first laws were written, and the first forms of writing were developed. That's Mesopotamia for you. But the historical significance of Mesopotamia doesn't end there. This region, now part of modern-day Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait, is also believed to be the setting of the biblical Garden of Eden. Intriguing, isn't it? Ancient texts place Eden at the meeting point of four rivers, two of which are the Tigris and Euphrates, both prominent in Mesopotamia. This is where our quest for paradise takes a fascinating turn. The term Mesopotamia itself translates to land between rivers. The Tigris and Euphrates, flowing through the heart of this region, provided the fertile soil necessary for civilization to bloom. The rivers were life-givers, turning the arid land into a lush, green oasis. It's not hard to see why this region, blessed with such bounty, could be likened to a paradise. But there's more to the story than just geographical coincidence. The Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations to inhabit Mesopotamia, have left behind a rich tapestry of myths and legends, many of which speak of a divine garden of abundance and bliss. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The Garden of Eden is often depicted as a utopia, a place of perfect harmony between humans and nature. Given the fertile soils, abundant water, and the birth of civilization in Mesopotamia, it's plausible to consider it as the real-world reflection of this utopia. But what evidence do we have to support this claim? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the scientific findings that could potentially unravel the mystery of the Garden of Eden. Remember, we're not just exploring a location here, but a symbol of harmony and peace that has shaped human culture and belief systems for millennia. Scientists have been digging deep to uncover the secrets of this ancient paradise. Unraveling the layers of time, they've pieced together a picture of what might have been the Garden of Eden. This is no easy task, given the millennia that have passed since the time of Eden as described in ancient texts. Geologists have played a crucial role in this quest, 
studying the landforms and river systems of the Mesopotamian region. They've discovered that the topography of this area has changed dramatically over the ages. In the distant past, it was a fertile land where four rivers, including the Tigris and Euphrates, converged. This matches the ancient descriptions of Eden. Archaeologists, too, have brought their expertise to bear on this mystery. They've unearthed remnants of ancient civilizations that thrived in this region. These civilizations, some of the earliest known to humankind, developed sophisticated agricultural systems, suggesting a lush, bountiful environment. Moreover, the rich cultural artifacts found here speak of a deep reverence for nature and its bounty. This aligns with the depiction of Eden as a place of harmony and abundance. But it's not just about the past. Botanists studying the native flora of the region have found species that have been there for thousands of years. These plant species, some unique to the region, suggest a once verdant landscape, much like the lush Garden of Eden described in the ancient texts. However, the paradise we see today is quite different from the Eden of old. Over the centuries, environmental changes and human activities have transformed this fertile crescent into a landscape that bears little resemblance to its ancient glory. The rivers have changed course, and much of the lush vegetation has given way to arid land. The quest for Eden is not just a journey into the past, but a mirror reflecting our present and future. It's a reminder of the transient beauty of our world and the need to preserve it for future generations. After all, paradise, once lost, is not easily regained. The lush landscapes of Eden seem to be a stark contrast to the modern-day Middle East. Over time, this region, once teeming with life and fertility, has seen significant environmental change. It's a narrative of paradise lost, a tale as old as time itself. Centuries ago, the confluence of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers nurtured an oasis of greenery. The land was bountiful, a veritable paradise where flora and fauna thrived. This was the heart of Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization and possibly the location of the Garden of Eden. But as millennia passed, the face of this ancient paradise began to change. Natural phenomena, coupled with human activities, led to the transformation of the environment. The rivers that once flowed freely altered their courses. The fertile lands turned into vast stretches of arid desert. The lush landscapes that could have been the Garden of Eden are now dominated by sand and stone. The region has also been a witness to the rise and fall of great empires, wars, and human strife. These events, too, have left indelible marks on the landscape, further distancing it from the idyllic image of Eden. Yet, despite these changes, the spirit of Eden is not entirely lost. It lives on in the resilient life forms that endure in these harsh conditions, in the traces of ancient civilizations buried beneath the sands, and in the hearts of the people who call this land their home. In the grand tapestry of life, the story of Eden serves as a stark reminder of the impermanence of things. It's a call to reflect upon our relationship with nature and our role as its stewards. As we continue to grapple with the impacts of climate change, the quest for Eden is not just about finding a physical location. It's about restoring balance, preserving biodiversity, and nurturing the paradise that is our planet. But the spirit of Eden lives on. The legacy of Eden persists, etched in the culture and folklore of the region. From the ancient Sumerians to present-day communities, the narrative of a divine garden, a paradise lost, remains a vibrant thread in the cultural fabric. Artifacts unearthed over the years, from intricately carved seals to pottery, depict scenes of a bountiful paradise, resounding with the Eden narrative. Local folklore, too, echoes with tales of a bygone era of harmony and abundance, further solidifying Eden's impact on the collective consciousness. The Garden of Eden, thus, is not just a location to be pinpointed on a map, it is a cultural phenomenon, a historical symbol that has shaped societies and inspired countless tales. Its influence permeates through art, literature, and traditions, a testament to its enduring allure. Eden may be lost, but its symbolism remains, a beacon of paradise in the collective human imagination.